This video is a review of the Aero Spider Handlebar Harness. And this device I've been using for about a year now, and I've used it on several bikepacking adventures as well as just daily rides and so forth. And so I feel like I formed a pretty strong impression of what I think it's really great at, some ways it could be improved, and also one major issue that I think really needs to be addressed by Arrow to improve this product. So let's get into it. So firstly, let's go over a couple of details about this harness. It retails for $79 US. It has a claimed weight of 454 grams, which is a pound. However, on my scale, it is approximately 550 grams. It's intended to be mounted by way of these straps and this mechanism right here directly to the handlebar on the bottom side to give you a mounting point on your bike to install some sort of bag in the front. Aero does sell their own dry bags that are designed specifically for this. They're a little bit on the pricey side, so I have opted not to use their dry bag. Instead found my own bags that I use to connect to this. The, the harness is basically been adapted from parts from their rear rack. This mounting bracket is the same as the brackets that are used for the rear rack to mount directly to the seat stays. And the actual plastic bracket itself is the same unit that can mount directly to the rear metal rack when it is installed. And you can install up to three of these on, on the rear rack. I do not have the rear rack and I don't have any experience with it. This is the only Aero product I have. I originally looked at getting some sort of harness like this uh, when I initially tried to find bags that I could attach to the handlebar and found that they were going to hang in my cables and cause bend angles that were unacceptable and constantly be pushing against the head tube. I started looking for methods of trying to support the weight on the front further away, allow a little space for these cables, and to more securely attach the load to my bike. All right, so let's look at mounting this up so you can see how it goes on. Basically, there are two straps. They have kind of a rubberized material on them in order to attempt to grip onto the handlebar itself so that it won't slip. These little metal clips attach to these pins, and when you tighten up these bolts underneath, it tightens the strap onto the handlebar. On the top is a little bit of rubber here, which actually comes out, and that is also intended to grip on the underside of your handlebar, so again, so it won't spin. So the only tool you need to attach it is an Allen key, or hex key. Uh, it does come with one, it's a five millimeter. This is not it, uh, I don't have it with me here right now. This is just one from a set that I have. And so I've previously had this installed, of course, and I've intentionally spaced the other accessories that I have here on my handlebar in such a way that I can fit all of them at the same time. So those are both hooked on there now, but loose. Nothing's been tightened yet. You can see that it kind of rests against the cables at this point. And when I put it in its final resting place, it does bend the cables slightly, but not very much. I have found that this one cable, when I turn the handlebars, will tend to catch sometimes on the front here. So I use a little piece of Velcro in order to hold the cable on the proper side of the harness when I'm riding. I'm gonna tighten this up, not completely yet, and just more than half. And then we'll look at the proper torque setting. So arrow indicates the maximum torque for each of the bolts should be four newton meters. So I'm going to use this little flexible torque wrench, which will deflect, and I need to get it to about four newton meters of torque. Four newton meters on both sides. So once the hex bolts are torqued to the proper four newton meters each, you can see as I try to bend it here that it's quite 
solidly mounted. And you can see that it gives adequate clearance for cables. And of course, depending upon the length of your stem, it gives you adequate clearance here. If you have a much shorter stem, it's going to be a shorter distance here. Um, but the, basically the whole point of this is to allow space for the cables to keep it away from rotating down and rubbing on your head tube and of course to be an effective solid mounting point for bags. Just a word about the straps. These are not the straps that came with the bike, although they're very similar. I found that the straps that were included, they were the same width as this, the same webbing, inch wide webbing. Um, I found that the straps that it came with were too short to wrap around a larger bag that I wanted to put in there. So I actually have gone through a couple of iterations of making my own straps. Just bought some webbing, one inch webbing off of Amazon and some of these clips, which can be, just be added on any ends. And you can make whatever length straps you want, relatively cheap parts. In my opinion, the straps that came with it, which I don't have here, unfortunately, I think they're too short. It, it would allow to put their own aero bags in here, of course, but it did not allow for the 20 liter dry bag that I wanted to fit in there. Since then, I've gone to a totally different mounting system, which I will show you in a bit here. This is a way that Aero, I think Aero needs to improve the delivered product. They need to give you longer straps. You can always cut them down if you find them too long um, or give you a couple of different size options because for the price, I think this thing should come ready to go out of the box. For my first attempt at using this harness, I decided to use a 20 liter dry bag just off of Amazon which is holding my entire sleep system. And my intent was to just strap this on here. Just like that, which at first glance worked quite well. Um, I found it was definitely secure enough, especially when I cinched these straps down. It turns out that the only problem ended up being that the bag, through constant jostling while doing bikepacking trips on gravel roads or trails, it would slide side to side. And so you can see with the, the aero bags that they make for this system actually has daisy chain on it, similar to this bag. And that daisy chain allows you to run the straps through these loops and keeps it from sliding side to side. So as you can see, the harness effectively keeps the load away from the cables, away from the head tube. Um, I haven't weighed this yet, but I will momentarily. Oh, I forgot to mention the maximum weight load, according to Aero, for this harness is five kilograms. What I want to do now is demonstrate what I found to be an issue when I first used the harness in this way, that with a load in it, it does not effectively resist moving. So to simulate that kind of jostling, I'm just going to do some bigger impacts, uh, dropping the front tire, similar to, you know, if you're riding over rocks or roots or something to that effect when you're riding on trails. Let's see what happens after a few drops. As you can see, I'm not going to have to take any measurements. <laughs> it's clearly rotated. It clearly did not resist the weight of the bag. Um, you could argue some of those drops were bigger than what you might encounter a lot of the time, but I felt that was only over 10 seconds. And uh, even if you're doing smaller drops, even if you're just riding on a gravel road, I found that all the tiny bumps over like a 30 minute period will cause it to come to the same the same location, which is either almost contacting or fully contacting the head tube, as well as bending your cables. The cable, the brake cable on this side is being bent at an angle that I'm really not happy about. It's not going to actually break it yet, but uh, this is not how I wanted this to function. It's still on there really well. I can't easily force it back. Um, but those those impacts, it's just impossible for it to resist the turning force caused by the weight of the bag on the front of the harness.
the way this worked out left me in a bit of a conundrum about this product. It seemed really well designed and executed, except for this major flaw, in my opinion. Um, this effectively made it unusable for me, and I was contemplating returning it. But seeing as I didn't have an alternative option for a harness that would do the job that I wanted, and this was close, I decided I would put a little more effort into it to try to make it work. Uh, my friend Aaron, who I recently did a bike packing trip with, he actually used the same harness on his felt gravel bike, which is drop bar bike. And he initially did testing with his bag and found that it wasn't rotating. But then after four days of riding, I think it was on the second day, he found that it was rubbing on the head tube way too much and he needed a solution. So he actually came up with a temporary workaround. He dropped by a small woodworking shop in Lake Cowichan and he got a small piece of wood. The guy was nice enough to drill a couple of holes in it, four holes I think in it, so that he could zip tie it either to the back of the harness or to the head tube, I can't remember which. I think it was to the back of the harness. And it made it so that uh, it had a little bit of cork on it. <laughs> it made it so that that was what was rubbing on his head tube and it wasn't damaging the paint finish. I decided to go a completely different route, um, but it's one that is available to me simply because I have a very good friend that is a, an amazing metal fabricator. And so he was kind enough to help me out with a bracket that I think solves the problem. This is a possible solution for Aero to provide a product that I think would be fantastic for lots of different bikes because as it is, I do not feel that this is a very usable product. So this is what we came up with. I really felt that the most stable place in order to support the weight of the harness would be from the steering tube itself. So there's spacers in here. I have a 10 millimeter and a five millimeter spacer. That allows me to actually take my handlebars off, remove those spacers, and my friend Toby fabricated this excellent piece of metal that just perfectly fits right in there. It extends forward and there is a hole in the center of the harness for the arrow and this portion sticks right down into that hole. And so when this is mounted in place on the steering tube and with this portion down into the bracket, the whole thing steers with the bike with the handlebar and it's constantly offering resistance to the harness when the vibrations and, and bouncing are trying to force it to move down. To me this is a fantastic solution. I put a little bit of tape on it here so that it's just the right size to fit in that opening and so it doesn't actually rattle at all. It just uh, fits snug. This has worked perfectly over my bikepacking adventures. It's just bomb proof. To me Something similar to this is what Aero needs to offer with this harness in order to make it actually usable. Now there's some details to work out. The length of this portion here to where this pin goes down, it's entirely dependent upon the length of your stem. And so this would need to be adjustable in some way, whether it be little holes that you could mount a pin through. The other thing that would probably change is this angle. You'll notice that this pin does not point down at a 90 degree angle from this portion. And that was measured basically to be where I wanted the angle of the harness to sit. So if that could be made to be adjustable for angle as well, if they can make it adjust for those two things, then I think they've got a real winner here. Of course, I don't know if all bikes have this kind of space on the head tube to work with. So that might be an issue. Most of the bikes I've seen do have it. I think this would be a highly effective solution. Well, it is a highly effective solution, but if they could come up with something that was universally able to do the job, they'd have a real winner here. So there it is, fully installed. You can see that that 
rod sticking out doesn't need to be as long as it is, but I left it that long in case I want to put it on a different bike with a different length stem. So that's what it took to make this an outstanding product, in my opinion. If we can do it, I think Aero should be able to do it and make it adjustable for different bike scenarios. So for comparison's sake, with my bracket installed on here and measuring the gap between the harness and the head tube, it is about 31 millimeters. I installed mine a little more vertical. I can afford to leave it closer to the head tube because I know it's not going to move and that leaves my load tucked in a little bit closer to the handlebars. Makes it feel more stable. So we're going to do some more jumping up and down here, try to simulate, simulate some off-road riding. So I can do that till I'm blue in the face and it won't move. It's in exactly the same position it was before I started, no surprise. Almost a fantastic product, now turned into a fantastic product in my opinion. I hope Arrow can do the same. So if you're thinking of buying this harness yourself, I think you need to put some hard thoughts into exactly what your use case is. If you're putting something extremely light on it, it might not move. But then I have to question whether you need something that weighs a kilogram in order to carry a really light load. So I would consider going another way. If you have the ability to fashion something like this yourself, or as uh, my buddy Aaron has come up with, to get a some type of device, it attaches to the head tube and it goes down and in front of the head tube and it just holds objects away, that will probably work as well. Because they won't be attached together, I imagine there might be some vibration over bumps, but it definitely will not crush your cables or come against the head tube. So as long as it can support the weight, that bracket, then uh, that should work as well. So here is the bag setup that I've currently been using on the harness. And I decided that I needed something that had daisy chain on it in order to keep the bag from sliding side to side when it's in the harness, falling out one end. So I wasn't particularly happy with the price of the Aero dry bags, so I bought this from Revelate Designs. Uh, I can't remember the price right now, but it's less, fully waterproof, well built. It has openings at both ends, so you can roll this out and expand it each way to add more equipment and also to access things from both ends, which I find really handy. I just wish it was a little bit bigger around. It's a little bit too tube-like. And to go with that, I have this old Cordura bag made by Serratus. It has little openings on the back for a strap. So you can see I've added more of my webbing and plastic straps so that I can make this attach on top of this. So this is the current setup I'm using with a really light load installed. I like the versatility, daytime items, easy access, access from both ends to add or remove things, and it includes daisy chain so it doesn't slide side to side. So thanks for watching my review of the Aero Spider handlebar harness. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you like to see more content like this. And thanks a lot for watching.